What's up, you guys? Welcome back. We're going to be diving into another parable. I really love this one. This one's really short. Really, really short. And I actually didn't even know it was a parable. Um, but it's the, oh, I don't want to say the most profound, but it's very, very, very profound. And I think very timely right now, especially where we're at in these times in, in, in the world we're living in. It's the parable of the children in the marketplace. Some call it the parable of the brats, I, I read somewhere. And is very eye-opening. I want to just ask that you just look to see yourself in this parable. I, I saw myself in it, especially when I first gave my life to Christ um, or just when I was really struggling with my faith. Very, very eye-opening. I'm going to read out of Matthew chapter 11, verse 16. All right. It says, to what can I compare this generation? It is like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends, we played wedding songs and you didn't dance. So we played funeral songs and you didn't mourn. And that's it. And that's it. So that's, that's the parable. But it goes on to say, for John didn't spend his time eating and drinking, and you say he's possessed by a demon. So Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and they're like, okay, John, he didn't eat or drink, right? He was very set apart. He was out in the wilderness eating lotus, right? And people just said, you know what? He's crazy. He's possessed by a demon. He's too serious. Any excuse, right, to not believe. The son of man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks. Jesus was eating and drinking with sinners, right? And you say he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by its results. Jesus is calling out the Pharisees, and I believe us as well, for finding any excuse to not believe in the gospel. Any excuse to not believe in the gospel. Oh, well, you know, if God was real, why would such and such happen, right? Or, okay, well, God is real, but such and such isn't happening to me right now. Where are you at? Or, man, it's, you know, it's, it's hard. It's never fun or, or joyous to, to be a Christian. I'm always, you know, reminiscing on old days, right? How come God is, is holding back some of the things that are essentially fun from a world standard? How come I can't enjoy it? I thought God was a God of pleasure. Whatever excuse, you can go down any rabbit hole. You can make any reason to not believe. Why would God kill his own son, right? Okay, why, how is there one God but yet, you know, three persons? All these different ways of, of doubting. Look at the words of Jesus. Again, what can I compare this generation? He says, you know what? You always find an excuse to not believe. I believe Jesus is saying that it's not an issue of what's happening or a lack of something happening. It's essentially a heart issue. Your heart is, is hardened, you know, and people always want to follow their heart, which is against the Bible, by the way. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. We have to know the truth of what the scripture says, the truth of what the Holy Spirit reveals to us, the truth of what God is, not what we feel. What can I compare this generation? I'm reminded of the story of, of uh, Lazarus, right? The rich man parable. And I'm not going to read all of it because this might be a parable I might discuss deeper um, later on. But just a quick synopsis of, of what's going on here is you see that there's, there's Lazarus and there's a rich man who both die. Lazarus goes to Abraham's bosom, which is a temporary, you know, holding place. Um, and the rich man actually just goes to hell, right? The, the chasm between Abraham's bosom and, and torment, essentially. And I'll dive into that later on. But at the very end, the rich man is, is crying out in torment to Abraham. He says, Abraham, look, if I'm stuck here, let me at least go back and tell my brothers so that way they can know that this place is real, right? So that they can never come back to this place. Abraham says, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't be persuaded even if someone rises from the dead. Again, this kind of echoes this generation of, of finding any excuse to not believe. But this is actually crazy. Even if people rise from the dead, I believe Jesus is foretelling his resurrection and the truth that some people will hear the gospel and still not believe it. We, we have an actual savior that rose from the dead. I want us to pause and really like digest that. A man rose from the dead. Jesus raised people from the dead. Jesus says we would be able to raise people from the dead. Why aren't we doing it? A man rose from the dead, proving that he has all authority in his hands. That is literally crazy to think someone rose from the dead. And I believe that's the biggest reason why all the apostles 
you know, the 12 that Jesus raised up to, to spread the gospel were willing to die for their faith because they saw something that's impossible happen. There are some people that know the impossible, know the truth of the gospel, but still won't come to him, still won't surrender their lives. Again, this wicked generation, this wicked generation is always asking for a sign, right? And Jesus even says, you know, you guys want to ask for a sign, you know, no sign will be given except for the sign of Jonah, right? Which that did happen. How about instead we open our hearts, look inwardly at ourselves and find that we don't know everything. Just come with an open heart to, to see if what God says he is in his word is actually true. The Bible says you don't need a, a teacher to, to help you. Essentially, the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. See that it's true or not for yourself that if you seek, you will find. And that if you knock, the door will be open. Let, let's find out if that's actually true. All right, that's what I did. And now here I am talking about the Lord on camera. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, again... It's not so much an issue of what has or has not been done. I believe it's a heart issue. In this parable, in Matthew 11, it's also in, in Luke as well. Um, you can read it there. But Jesus says, what can I compare this generation? Always finding excuses to not believe. That's the heart of the Pharisees. And these Pharisees were the religious people at the time. Who are the religious people in our time right now? I believe there's a lot of people in the church that are just so reluctant of, of experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Kind of like the Pharisees were. You know, all this healing that Jesus was doing, they're finding any way to rebuke the healing that he was doing. It's crazy. Oh, you healing on the Sabbath? You know, any, any excuse. And I believe nothing's new under the sun. There's certain people that just don't want to take the power of the Holy Spirit for what it is. God is not in a box. He is... <laughs> he is amazing. He is amazing. And we get to behold his glory through his Holy Spirit of, of the power that he's equipping us to go in and preach the gospel, to go and lay hands on the sick, to, to speak in tongues, all these crazy things that we just want to shut down because it's, it's foreign. It's, it's a little less controlling. I think the issue is control, right? The Pharisees wanted control. We are the religious people and that's it. I want you guys to come to me and think I'm a, I'm a holy man and, and don't go anywhere else. Instead of letting go and letting God move, that's what makes you stay. Let's check our hearts, okay? Let's open our hearts and, and come closer to what the truth says. All right, love you guys. Stay tuned for another parable. Let me know what you think about this one. Um, I, like I said, I didn't even know this was a parable. So take care.